students, welcome to another week of Virtual Impact. I'm glad you're joining in. Tonight would have been Parent Student Night, so I'm hoping you and your family are watching as we continue our series on fearless faith. And before we do that, uh, let me go to the Lord in prayer. Pray with me. Father, we thank you uh, for being able to gather, even though it's online. Um, thank you for the worship, Lord, that we're We just had, and Lord, just pray that through the worship songs, through your word, we hear you speak loud and clear to us. Pray, Lord, that we have um, the obedience to just be honest, Father, with how we feel, what we're going through, what we're facing. And Lord, I pray that we know and realize that you are faithful through all of this, all our fears, all our anxieties. I pray that we know that you're bigger than all of them. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus, and tonight may we grow in your word. For it's in your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. so glad that you're with us tonight we just invite you to worship in spirit and in truth tonight and put aside all the distractions all the things that are on your mind and let's focus in on what the Lord has for us tonight
I just pray that you would fill every living room of every student and every leader that is watching right now. Pray that you would just fill their living rooms, their bedrooms, their kitchens with your Holy Spirit, that you would speak to us, that you would show us your face tonight, that we would seek you in your will for our life, Lord. I pray that tonight you would enjoy our praise, that you would just smile on us and bring us peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we trust you in this season and we love you. Amen. Students, I'm excited about tonight. I'm excited about the series that we started last week and we looked at Daniel. Tonight we're going to look at someone else in Scripture. But I know that some of you uh, are in the midst of dealing with some fears in your life right now. And there may be things going on at home, uh, things going on with your friends or whatever it may be. You are living just in a constant uh, source of anxiety and the thing I want you to do tonight is just clear everything. Put every distraction you have, if you're watching online, put your phone down, uh, grab a pen and pad, take some notes, uh, but zero in and, and pay attention to what God has to say to us tonight. So others of you may be struggling with more of an inner fear because of what you think other people think about you. You hear their voices in your head saying you're never going to be good enough, smart enough, strong enough, pretty enough. And for some of you, those voices play like a soundtrack in your mind and attack your sense of self-worth. And your biggest fear may be, what if they're right? What if I'm not pretty enough? What if I'm, what if I'm not smart enough? What if I'm not strong enough? And you start to believe these things and these things start to become your identity but I want you to please write this down, and I need you to think about this really hard. The more you focus on what other people think about you, the harder it is to see what God says about you. And if you're falling apart, there's good news, great news. Because here's the thing, I was walking my dog the other day, and we're dealing with some things uh, that everybody deals with in our family. But there have been times through all this quarantine that maybe I've fallen apart. And here's the thing, you got to understand, whether it's your parents or, or whoever it is, we adults don't have it all together. We're all walking through this together. This is new for all of us. And we do have fears and we do have anxieties. And as much as I read the Word and God says, do not be anxious, do not fear, there are times that I slip into that and i was in that uh, anxiety, fear stage. And I was walking Jack's the other day, and a song came on my worship playlist. I've had it there, but it was just randomly. And it was good news that I heard and were reminded of God saying that he makes all things new. And, man, I, I love Big Daddy Weed that they put this song out, and if you hadn't heard it, download it. It's a great song. It just spoke to me a lot, and it made me realize the more I focus on everything else, whether it's what people think or whether it's the situation that's going on, I am clearly missing what God says about me, and he says a lot through his word. So if you're falling apart, that's the good news. God makes all things new. Revelation 21, 5, he's seated on the throne and said, Behold, I am making all things things new. So where in scripture can we find someone living out fearless faith in the midst of struggles? Last week we seen Daniel did. But if you have a Bible, I want you to open up to Numbers 13. And we're going to look at the story of a guy named Joshua. And I know that's Alex Neal. He loves Joshua. We're going to look at Joshua who did live out fearless faith. So let me give you a little context before we jump in. The nation of Israel had been suffering as slaves in Egypt for about 400 years. And then God used a man named Moses to lead them out. And they were headed for a place called the Promised Land, which is described as a land flowing with milk and honey. 
And the only problem is to get into the promised land, they had to drive out these people already living there, which would be no easy task. So God told Moses to pick 12 men, 12 men to go spy out the land and bring back a report. So that's where we pick up in Numbers 13, 27 through 28. Let's read. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land of which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. And here's its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. So that's the report. Now, did you hear the tone there in the report? It was a beautiful piece of real estate. They even had a fountain of milk and honey. And I don't know how about you, but I mean, in my mind, and I, I go to this land and I see a fountain of milk and honey, I'm like, man, this might be a pretty awesome place. It was beautiful. Who wouldn't want to live in a place like that? But the people living there were big, they were strong, they were powerful. And they probably even seen giants by the description they were telling Moses. So what they were really saying was this. And what we really say is this, whether it's our fear or anxiety or our worry. We say the same thing that some of these guys said. Ten out of the twelve, they were saying this. There's no way we're going to take this land even though this is the land that God promised us, and even though we've seen the miraculous way God rescued us out of the land of Egypt, we're just not big enough, we're not strong enough, and we just don't trust that God will come through for us again. And we say that over and over and over in our own lives. We're no different than the nation of Israel. We've seen God work miracles. We've seen God answer our prayers. We've seen God do things that we can't explain. But we celebrate it and we worship. And then all of a sudden fear, anxiety hit us again. And we forget about those moments that God was so big. So much bigger than our fears. So much bigger than our anxieties. We've seen it and we forget it. God is faithful. And we're like, well, if God's faithful then, he's just not going to be faithful now. And it's not true. We always forget about how huge God is in our lives. Anxiety bows to him. Fear bows to him. Your worries bow to him. So here's where they are. God's not going to come through for us again. In fact, we're probably all just going to die. This was the report that the spies brought back to Moses. While two of the twelve challenged this report saying this, Joshua and Caleb, we've got this. If God is in it, we will be successful. And the other ten were defiant and gave in to their fears. Let's look at Numbers 13, 31 through 33. But then the men had gone up with him and said, we can't attack those people. They're stronger than we are. That's why anxiety is stronger than we are. This fear is stronger than we are. We're saying the same things. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land that they explored. And they said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are great size. We saw the Nephilim there. The descendants of Anak come from Nephilim. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. We're not big enough. Has there ever been a time when you felt like that, a grasshopper in the land of giants? Now, I imagine Abby Walters and Kayla Stone probably feel like that when they come in every Wednesday night or Sunday. They feel like grasshoppers in the land of giants. But have you ever felt that way with the problems that you're going through right now? Define them. Like right now where you're sitting, define them. Tell them to God, this is what I'm scared of. This is what I'm spending all my time worrying on. This is what my anxiety is filling up with, God. And I'm just going to sit on my couch or my chair or my floor or my beanbag or whatever it is. And I'm going to tell you this and I'm going to be honest with you. This is where I'm at. And I don't trust you. I just don't know if you're big enough to get me over this fear or this worry that I'm going through. And it's starting to affect not only me, but my family. And it's starting to affect the people around me. Because I'm giving off this attitude that you're not big enough to take care of the things that have mounted up. The pressures and the fears and the anxieties that are going through my body. And we don't like to say it, man, but I said it. 
God, I don't trust you in this moment. And I'm sorry for saying that, but we got to realize that we can have these conversations with God. We're never going to get to the other side of what's killing us if we don't deal with the side that we're currently walking through. And God can take it. We're like grasshoppers compared to how huge God is and what God created and what God has done. Think about it. It's times like this, it's easy to start believing everything about yourself that you're saying and, and about God that, uh, that he can't trust you, but that has no basis in reality. You might be thinking maybe God isn't really there for you or he doesn't really care for you or your situation or maybe it's not really worth it to follow God and trust his promises. This was exactly what was going on with the nation of Israel once they heard this report. Look over at Numbers 14, 1 through 4. Let's pick up there and you'll see this. That night all the members of the community raised their voices, wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And those whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children would be taken as a plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? Wouldn't it be better for us just to go back to slavery? God's delivered us. God has done everything he's promised up to now. God has parted the Red Sea. God has been so good. But in this moment, I don't think he's big enough to take us past this step. So wouldn't it just be easier to go back to slavery? We fall by the swords. And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. God's not big enough. People were weeping and crying throughout the night. They were talking about the good old days of slavery. This is where they were. This is where we are. We, we will, the enemy will get us to start thinking, remember when you didn't have this pressure, when you could just do whatever you wanted to do, say whatever you wanted to say, there was no obedience thing. You just lived life your way. Wasn't those the good old days? Wasn't it amazing being a slave to the world? And this is where the Israelites were. Wouldn't it have been better if we had just died as slaves back in Egypt? And that's part of what sin does to us when it gets a grip on us. Sin distorts our reality. God's people were looking for a GPS direction for how to get back to Egypt. And they were done with Moses' point. And they were ready to choose a new leader. But in the midst of all the whining, the fear, the craziness, and attempted mutiny, two men stood up and put everything Everything on the line to go against this crowd. Look at 14, 6, and 9 of Numbers. Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had explored the land and tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. <clears throat> Only... Do not rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Joshua and Caleb remembered something that everyone else had forgotten that we need to be reminded of here tonight. They knew that the God they served is bigger than anything that they face. He was the same God who rescued them out of slavery in Egypt. So despite how big and scary the other nations and armies seem, God was bigger. No matter how scary your fear seems or what you're afraid of about tomorrow or next week or what's coming next month or when this virus is going to end, when are we going to meet together, this is driving me crazy. Families falling apart, maybe it's a job situation. There are real struggles and fears out there, but at some point we just have to stop in the midst of calm and hear the still, small voice of God saying, I am bigger. Trust me. I will be faithful to you. So despite how big and scary everything is in your life, God is bigger. 
He was more than able to protect his people and bring them into the promised land. And another way to say this, another way to look at this is everything. While you're on the couch and you're being honest with God and you're telling, okay, God, I'm scared, I'm afraid, I'm worried, I'm rebelling, I'm falling away. I'm not listening to your voice. I'm not trusting in your promises. Another way I want you to see this is don't focus on the source of your fear, but focus on the size of your Savior. Let that be something that you meditate on. All this time you have been focusing on how big everything is that you're up against. But you have forgotten something that I have forgotten too. And if we all of our adults were honest, they would probably say we have forgot it a time or two in our life. It's how much bigger God is than everything that we say is significant that's making our life fall apart. So think about the giants you're facing, but instead of facing your fears head on and trusting, but if, when you look at these giants, instead of worrying and, and being scared, face your fears head on, trusting in God's faithfulness. It's easier just to stay right where you are and live in fear. That is what the enemy would say. So you don't rock the boat, especially when no one else would be standing with you. Remember that most of the spies, 10 and the 12, wanted to retreat and live in fear. And only Joshua and Caleb wanted to live with a fearless faith and follow God into the promised land that he promised them they would walk into. They didn't focus on the source of their fears, but they did focus on the size of their Savior. Maybe you're among your group of friends. You're the only Christian trying to live for God. I get that. While you want them to respect your beliefs and values and follow Jesus, your fear is that if you say something or share your faith, then you'll be judged or labeled as no fun. I know that the fear of losing friends is huge, but don't fall, focus on the size of your fear. Focus on the size of your Savior. Others of you may be in a relationship with a guy or girl that things have been going well, but now you're starting to feel pressure of moving things to the next level physically. And while you know God is clear on his boundaries in this area, you don't want to miss out on the fun. That's what the enemy promises. And you don't want to disappoint your boyfriend or girlfriend, so your fear is in that relationship will end if you don't give in. And that no one will want to date you. Don't focus on the size of your fear or the source of it but on the size of your savior i don't know what the giant is in your life right now i have no idea what it is the pain the hurt the fear i don't know but i'm asking you just to take a second on your couch and focus on the size of your god remember everything that he has done through genesis through revelation what he says he's going to do the promises that he has given the people that he has rescued daniel in the lion's den joseph sold into slavery by his own brothers jesus at the cross and the disciples couldn't make sense of everything that was going on the day that he rose all these promises and things that he's done paul and silas worshiping chains breaking Prison escapes. So much stuff that God has done and showed us repeatedly. I am bigger than everything that can come against you. For some of you, this may hit a little bit closer to home. Maybe in your family, you're the one who is a Christian, but no one else is supportive of your church. You have to focus on the size of your Savior. There is scripture that repeatedly tells us this. Jeremiah 32, 17, Ah, oh, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Psalm 56, 34, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. In God, I trust and I'm not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? 2 Peter 1 and 3, His divine power has given us everything Thing we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness and praise God hallelujah Luke 1 37 for nothing will be impossible with God what would happen if we begin to focus more on the size of our God than the source of our fear like Joshua and Caleb did so for the nation of Israel most chose to go with the crowd and live in fear. As a result, they experienced some pretty severe consequences. God said they would, they would wander around in the wilderness for the next 40 years. And the current generation of Israelites would never get to the promised land with milk and honey fountains. But God did make two exceptions, Joshua and Caleb. 
Since they focused more on the size of their Savior than the source of their fear, God rewarded them by allowing them to enter into the promised land. And he gave them more responsibility and influence. And eventually Joshua became the new leader for God's people listened to God's instructions. And you can read that in Joshua 1, 6, 7. In fact, I, I, it'll probably be up on the screen for you. But you can see it right there. So don't focus on the source of your fear, but the size of your Savior. What would it look like? Students, adults, whoever you look are watching tonight, what would it look like if you give your fears over to God? What if right now you're sitting down, you just start this confession mode of, okay, God, I'm scared, I have anxiety, or maybe, God, I'm spiritually lazy. God, I have, I have wandered away from you. God, I've started looking at other things in the world for comfort. I've started to look at things that you know or have said that aren't right to bring me comfort. Nothing's working. I'm still scared. I'm still full of anxiety. I'm still wandering in the desert. I'm still walking away from you. Be honest. Like I told a student last night, start with honesty. For goodness sakes, don't be scared of that. God, I am not following you. God, I am not in love with you the way I would. I need a church building to make that happen, God. I need other people around me to make that happen, to make my love for you come out. That's not how it works. Isolated in a group of people, for goodness sakes, our hunger and love for Jesus is an individual thing that should be there through the growth of the Word of God and prayer in Him. You read when you don't want to read. You pray when you don't want to pray. And you're honest with God. And you're like, God, please send a breakthrough because I need it. So I'm going to sit back and I'm going to trust you because I have seen how big you are so many times through Scripture. I have seen so many rescues. I've seen so many people bow to your feet because you are who you are. You created the heavens and earth. That's something I want to trust, students, because that is bigger than anything this world can throw at us, including a virus, including loneliness, including not being in a church building, including not being around with our friends. I miss all of it, but it doesn't mean that I just sit around and say, all right, God, I don't have all this stuff, so I'm just not going to follow you. I'm not going to trust in you. It's not how it works. So tonight, I ask you, be honest. Right there where you are, whether you're a student or an adult, just talk to God. God, here I am. And to start that conversation, let me, conversation, let me pray for us. God, you know our hearts. You know our desires. You know where we are. You know if we're scared, afraid, lonely. Whatever it is we're facing, God, you also know that if we're putting our trust in you or that we believe that you're bigger than anything that is coming against us right this moment. And God, there's so much. There's people losing their jobs. There's people, we don't know the answer of when we can travel outside of our own house. We don't know when we can be with our friends. We don't know when we can socialize again. We don't know when we can go back to work again. All these things, God, are bringing fear and anxiety. But you know this. And God, I don't know the answer. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know how you're working through all this. I don't know the good that's going to come out of all of it. I just don't have the answers. But what I do have the answer to, God, is that you're faithful. You're bigger. You're greater. And God, all the stuff that has been stripped away from us, we are left with this. Just you and us. God, we have to answer the question, is that enough? Are you enough for us in these times? God, I pray we choose like Caleb did and like Joshua did, that you are. And we're going to trust in you in the land of giants that we're facing and believe that you're faithful and believe that whatever you are doing, we may not know for a week, a month, five years, ten years, but believe that it's going to be good and it's going to be great because you're the one that's orchestrating everything for our good who loves you. We love you and we thank you and we trust you tonight. For it's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Here's the pieces of my heart. What can you do with them? Because I can't open them all together anymore. So I let them fall, surrender to the floor. You make all things new. You make all things new. God of mercy and love, do what only you can do and make all Only you can bring such beauty from the depths of all my pain. Only you can take this shattered heart and make it beat again. You hold us all together in your hands. I surrender all I have and all I am. You make all things new. You make all things new. God of mercy. Students, thank you, and thank you for joining in for another uh, virtual impact. Uh, man, share the link, put it in your bio, spread the gospel. Uh, this Sunday night, something's cool happening. Uh, us and the TR campus, John and I are excited about Will Campbell being on our live group. It will be Instagram Live Sunday night at 630 on the Mount Juliet campus Instagram page. Uh, we want you to join. Submit questions to me, man, for Will, just like you did with Robert. Robert did a great job, and Robert, thank you uh, for, for joining us Sunday night. Our students loved it. Will, we're looking forward to you coming. So uh, send questions, and it doesn't have to be related to what's going on with the Bible. You, if you have a Bible question, something you've always wanted to ask or whatever, submit those questions to myself or John, 
and we will get those to Will. Guys, I love you so much. I miss you so much. I enjoy the Zoom calls, the FaceTime, and we'll keep doing that. And I look forward to seeing you Sunday night. God bless. Thank you.